Which Batman do people keep referencing in Peacemaker, and how could it tie into the upcoming Flash movie? Are these just jokes, or are they actually hidden secrets that only the cleverest fans could find? Christopher Smith is living proof that a sucker is born every minute on the internet. Throughout the first season of Peacemaker, he reveals that Aquaman is mercurious, and Superman loves to leap the tallest buildings for a chance to snack on fresh butt burritos. Of course, these are only a handful of fun facts about the Justice League that he's scoured the internet for, and he treats every dubious comment section as gospel. You actually believe that? He has an insane story for every single superhero. The question is, how far do his conspiracy theories reach? It doesn't help that he came from a home where his father was a racist and misogynist criminal who bought into every crackpot that monetizes the spread of misinformation and division. While the rest of Project Butterfly has poked holes in his supposed facts about the world, Peacemaker still holds on to an outrageous belief system that would make the average person question their sanity. The other somewhat unlikely possibility is that these are, in fact, real facts in the world of Peacemaker. I'm so sick of that rumor. It's not a rumor. You bury. While it's common to include Easter eggs and comic book references in superhero shows, John Economos' declaration to Peacemaker has an interesting implication. I'd rather be with Batmite than you. Who's Batmite? The two-foot-tall interdimensional imp who stands Batman. I'd rather be with him. It all but confirms the existence of Batmite in the DCEU. Fans have seen this pesky character appear in other TV shows such as The New Adventures of Batman and Batman the Brave and the Bold, but this is the first time he's been mentioned in a live-action show. On his official Instagram account, James Gunn confirmed that Batmite is now canon. But is he really? If he's not actually seen, how can anyone actually be sure he exists? We'd better stop here before the philosophical implications get overwhelming. It was a brave decision to turn Augie Smith into the White Dragon of the DCEU. In the context of the story and our understanding of Peacemaker's troubled past, it was a natural fit to turn Augie into the white supremacist supervillain who led his son astray with a highly questionable upbringing. That said, there have been multiple versions of the White Dragon in the comics, so even though Augie might be dead in Peacemaker, he has a legion of followers who are more than likely to take up the mantle in the future. Ask Peacemaker who his best friend is, and there's only one answer. Eagly. To be fair, who wouldn't want to be BFFs with an eagle that's capable of gouging out the eyes of enemies with both its beak and talons? Be that as it may, Vigilante might have something to say about this current friendship hierarchy. Vigilante? Just like an all-time classic run with my best friend, my second best friend Eagly, my fifth best friend Adebayo. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that Vigilante looks up to Peacemaker and sees him as his only friend. Even though Peacemaker won't freely admit it in the public, he does view Adrian Chase as a friend, albeit a bit of an annoying one. That said, Vigilante has been there for him when he's needed him the most. He might not be the most conventional of friends, or a rational human being, but he hasn't let down Peacemaker yet. Maybe, just maybe, Vigilante may finally be acknowledged as Peacemaker's best friend one day. Well, probably not. Don't tell V, but after Eagly, you're my BFF. Where exactly does Peacemaker fit in the DC film universe's timeline? Judging by the events and characters, it takes place immediately after the Suicide Squad, which is considered a part of the DCEU. In this timeline, the Batman is still Ben Affleck's version of the Caped Crusader. However, this doesn't quite align with something that Augie's neighbor says to Peacemaker about the Dark Knight not killing. Batman doesn't kill people. Because he's a pussy! He's a dark creature of the night! He's a jackass! Recalling the events of Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, Batman didn't straight up murder criminals. But he didn't exactly pump the brakes on the Batmobile to avoid crashing into them, nor did he exercise much restraint in the brutal beatdowns he dished out, either. It sure looks like he kills at least a couple of bad guys. One possibility here is that Peacemaker might actually take place after the Flash movie. The upcoming movie will feature Barry Allen breaking the timeline and crossing the streams of the multiverse, 
so in the process, he could have brought in a new Batman who has much cleaner hands than Batfleck. Alternatively, we're reading too much into what's most likely just a joke. Make no mistake about it, Christopher Smith is a love machine. He's got all his love to give and all his life to live. However, there's a revealing moment in the episode Mern After Reading that indicates a midnight rendezvous that didn't quite finish as expected. As a favor to Jamil, the janitor from the hospital where Smith was, Peacemaker speaks to the local school in an effort to make Jamil's child seem more popular. Naturally, the children ask him a lot of questions, though there's one specific query that sticks out more than the others. A little girl holds up her hand and asks Peacemaker if he remembers her mom, Becky Coolidge. I haven't seen her in like 10 years. I think you might be my real dad. What? It's played like a joke, but it could be an interesting plot thread for a future storyline. What if the little girl really is Peacemaker's daughter? And what if her mother is someone who could be linked to another superhero or villain? In the episode Stop Dragging My Heart Around, it's implied that Peacemaker's sexuality is a bit more fluid than his general demeanor might have implied. Series creator James Gunn himself revealed to Empire Magazine that John Cena played a pivotal role in shaping the character's sexuality. Gunn said, John does improv all the time, and he just turned Christopher Smith into this hypersexualized dude that is open to anything sexually. Considering Peacemaker's openness to romantic partners, there's a chance that he and Vigilante could develop into something more in the future as well. The two of them share an intimate encounter with Amber, so it isn't like they haven't had a close encounter of the bedroom kind. At the same time, it could go a long way to explaining Vigilante's borderline obsession with Smith. What started off as a bond over violent crime fighting could blossom into something more special and intimate between them. That said, the answer to this question is probably not, since Peacemaker ends with an implied bond between Chris and Harcourt. Peacemaker. What a joke. Rick Flagg's line from the Suicide Squad has haunted Smith ever since he killed Task Force X's leader. While he might have thought he had a very good reason for doing so at the time, it still doesn't help ease his conscience. Ultimately, he was simply following orders, which is something that Amanda Waller values more than anything else. She wants foot soldiers, not free thinkers, on her team. So could he find himself back on her team in the future? After all, Peacemaker killing someone is nothing new to the Suicide Squad. This is a team full of murderous supervillains. Peacemaker is no saint, but neither are any of the criminals involved in Task Force X. Waller might still see a purpose for him, so it's possible that she might call him up to the main team once again somewhere down the line. It's Cow or Never, the season 1 finale of Peacemaker, features unexpected and epic cameos from the Justice League. While Wonder Woman and Superman are out of focus and shown through the use of silhouettes, Jason Momoa's Aquaman and Ezra Miller's Flash actually have lines and show their faces. However, there's one crucial member missing from the lineup here – Batman. The Dark Knight's existence was already confirmed in the series, so where's he hiding during this scene? Did the Batmobile break down or something? Again, this could give credence to the theory that Peacemaker takes place after the Flash film. Considering the movie is set to be Batfleck's swan song in the DCEU, there's a good chance that the Justice League might be a member short for a while. No one expected Adebayo to go in front of the world and confirm the existence of Task Force X and what it does. Perhaps even more shockingly, she exposes her mother's identity and role in this program. It's an event that's likely to have major repercussions and could result in Waller being removed as the puppet master of the Suicide Squad. Yet, despite Adebayo's revelations, there's no chance that Task Force X will be shut down. It'll simply pop up under another guise. This might present an opportunity for someone new to take the reins of Task Force X and the Suicide Squad. Adebayo is an improbable candidate since she exposed the whole operation, but Amelia Harcourt could be in line for a major promotion. Her near-fatal injuries in the season finale may move her out of the field and into an internal role. Perhaps a Season 2 of Peacemaker could address who takes over the vacancy at Task Force X. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite comic book shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.